uh, come today to help us uh, celebrate this, this great announcement. Um, it's uh, my honor to stand here before you today and, and uh, share in these announcements um, with the, the governor and his staff, as well as the commissioners and the Department of Rehab and Corrections. Uh, it's a very exciting day anytime we get to welcome the governor to uh, Gallia County. For me personally, uh, I was more excited when I found out Fran was coming this morning. <laughs> if, I, if I'd known she would have uh, been coming, I would have... Uh, I would have uh, put in an order for some rhubarb cobbler, um, <laughs> which I, I had a while back and, and is just amazing. But uh, personally, uh, there are several people that I would like to thank that have helped us uh, get to these milestones today. I want to thank several people uh, that have been instrumental in putting into work uh, to get us where we are at today. First and foremost, I want to thank my staff and my team at the Gay County Sheriff's Office, specifically our corrections team and our road patrol division, uh, who continue to serve the citizens of Gay County valiantly every day and help me in the protection of our people uh, to keep our friends and neighbors safe here in Gay County. Many thanks go out today to the commissioner's office and to the staff and the team there at the commissioner's office who have worked so hard alongside of my team uh, to bring this much needed project to fruition. To our friends at the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections, uh, specifically Mr. Adams and his team. Um, Mr. Adams and his team have become uh, good friends and somebody that we lean on uh, pretty much a, a daily basis. Um, we lean on their guidance, their expertise, uh, and their support, and they've been there for us every step of the way um, through this process to get us to uh, where we need to be today uh, to bring this, this project to, to Gaggy County. Obviously, we're here today for a reason, uh, which I'll, I'll let the governor illustrate and talk more about here in just a few minutes. Uh, but that reason is a receipt of a quite a large sum of money coming to Gaggy County uh, to enhance our jail project and to support uh, what we're doing here to bring a better day to Gaggy County. Um, the construction of our new jail is something that's monumental to us here in Gaggy County, and it's something that's going to serve um, not only my staff at the sheriff's office, but our law, other law enforcement agency agencies in the county and the citizens of Gaggy County well, uh, very far into the future. Many hours and a lot of hard work has uh, been put into the process to obtain this money, this funding that's coming from the state. And uh, my team and the team at the commissioner's office have worked uh, very diligently uh, to prepare the applications and to uh, submit those applications to receive this funding. Many thanks are owed to County Administrator Melissa Clark. Uh, she's put a lot of title, tireless hours into the preparation uh, to receive this funding. Uh, a lot of labor has went in uh, on her end to uh, prepare the application and get it ready. Uh, with the support of the team, uh, Ms. Clark, along with the commissioners, were instrumental in securing this funding and bringing these tax dollars back to Gaggy County so that we're, it's a benefit to all, us and all of the citizens. Um, I'm not going to stand here and beat you with words. Um, it's a great day for Gaggy County. Um, we're very thankful um, to be able to receive this money to enhance our project. And uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce State Representative Jason Stevens, who, was, uh, who had a huge hand in helping us uh, get this money and uh, has been a very, very good friend to Gaggy County for a very long time. Mr. Stevens. Hey, Bob, come on up. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you for uh, this day. It is a great day uh, here in uh, Southern Ohio in Gallia County. And as a, uh, a former county official, I can tell you uh, county jails are a huge, huge um, part of a county budget. They're also part of, uh, you know, keeping people safe. And I just want to commend the folks here in Gallia County for uh, working so tirelessly. You know, one of the first things that, uh, you know, Commissioner... Montgomery and I talked about was their need for a county jail and uh, I want to um, also thank the administration they've been fantastic through this and I want to thank the governor personally because he understands um, you know what it means for us uh, here in southern Ohio to be able to help us with this uh, amount of money and I'll let him go into to the details but I just wanted to thank to thank those involved and probably the the biggest um, advocate proponent uh, for this project is uh, Commissioner Montgomery. I know he's been working on it for a long, long time, and uh, I want to give him the opportunity to uh, say a few words, but I want to uh, just let everybody know how, how big of a deal this really is and how much of an impact it can have um, in our community to uh, keep our 
citizens safe and also um, you know keep our funding and the county finances uh, in line so with that uh, Commissioner Montgomery I got some designer glasses here that um, I left mine somewhere this morning and, 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 and the clerk or assistant clerk she keeps an extra pair in her desk so but they they fit or I can see through them yeah I, I'm very proud to be here this morning and thank everyone for coming uh, especially our distinguished guest um, mr. Adams mm -hmm. this gentleman I've talked with a few times on the phone and really never met you so it's nice to see you, John Adams. <laughs> we certainly appreciate your administration of work there I'd like to move back in the time frame of this um, jail project it, it was a very difficult time back in um, 2016 and along in that era and we had we had a severe problem we had budget issues uh, we had an overcrowding of the jail and that threw a tremendous strain on our budget and so I'd just like to go through a timeline if you bear with me and and uh, but first off I'd like to recognize two previous commissioners dr. David K Smith and coach Brent A. Saunders. Um, they worked on this project back in the 2015 16 through those era. And, um, and my two new commissioners with me this year is Jay Stapleton and Eugene Green. I think Gene is over here and Jay is over here. So it's with the help of those four individuals that we have gotten to the point where we're at with the jail. Um, back about 2016 you know the situation was dire mainly due to the opioid crisis causing our jail population to explode over the next few years and keeping in mind our current jail opened in 1964 and is recommended for 22 inmates in 2016 the number of prisoners entering the court system was around 1700 an increase to about 2600 by 2019 the number of out of county housing increased from 83 in 2016 to an estimated 400 in 2019 the number of court cases escalated during the same time frame the courts and the prosecutors budget along with the county coroners all had major increases Now on the budget situation, you can see the, the strain was being put forth on the budget. We had some other issues on the back side of that. Um, first, this was one that uh, legislation was passed allowing villages to charge citations under the state code. And in doing so, the villages or city no longer was responsible for housing the prisoner. So they immediately became our responsibility at the time Eugene Green city manager and uh, it saved the city about two hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> to three hundred three hundred thousand dollars a year and and now Eugene you're over on the other side here and, and you're seeing what that's happened <laughs> but that's just one little loss of revenue during that time um, and uh, and during the same time frame the county lost about six hundred thousand dollars annually to the Medicaid sales tax issue and we also lost about a hundred and fifty thousand in, in our utilities taxation um, we just had thing after thing reducing our income and we're a small county of about with a, about a $10 million budget. And so you, you take, uh, you lose 600,000 here and you lose 250, 300 here and you lose 150 here. This all adds up. And then with the increase of all of our population. So we were in, we were in a very 
sad situation at that time. And I tell you these things just to emphasize how important it is, it was, to get these state funds to help with the construction of our new facility. It's um, a challenge, it was gonna be a challenge, but it has lessened the burden and we're going to build a state-of-the-art jail here and we have several people to thank the state legislature, but more importantly, the state governor, Mike DeWine. We thank each of you for your help and hope you're back for ribbon cutting. So, so with that, I'd like to take this moment to introduce a friend of Gallia County. He's been here often and and you'll certainly be back for a few more announcements. Governor Mike DeWine. Okay. Bob, why don't you come on up? Go ahead. So we'll, we'll tease uh, Governor DeWine just a minute longer. <laughs> um, you know, it's great, to be, it's great to be with you. When I first, uh, I've had the pleasure of representing Gallia County for 10 years now. And uh, the commissioners at the time, the law enforcement officials at that time, and continuing have been very consistent uh, the judges have been very consistent that they, they want a jail, they need a jail, and they need some help uh, funding it. And uh, working with uh, then Representative Ryan Smith, uh, we started uh, down that road, and uh, my partner, uh, Jason Stevens, was able to work with me, and uh, we were able to get uh, capital dollars for this project, and it's very exciting. As a former county commissioner, I know one of the, one of the great advantages, and I had a jail very similar in Fayette County. Uh, we were rated at 24 beds and uh, most times had a population of 60 to 80 people in it. Uh, so I very much know those challenges that uh, everybody here has worked through and worked through very effectively and excited for what's next. And I know they'll use those dollars. Uh, Governor, what I tell people all the time is that any dollars you spend down here in Southern Ohio, it's gonna be well spent and your dollars go a lot further. So it doesn't take as much to make a bigger <laughs> impact in uh, rural Ohio. Uh, it'll be well spent. I'm proud of the folks. I'm excited to see what happens. Because with the new jail, not only do you get uh, more cells to put uh, people that do uh, bad things away and protect the public, but you also, with the new jail, have the ability to do rehab and to better help people get back on their lives and uh, to be productive members of society. And that's what's going to be truly exciting. Proud to be here today and look forward to ribbon cutting. And now the main event. It's my pleasure to welcome Governor Mike DeWine. Well, Fran, I always look forward to being in, in Gallia County. So it's, it's uh, always, always fun to be back, and uh, you know, we appreciate what everybody does. Appreciate the local local leadership, um, commissioners and the sheriff, and and everyone. Um, we also want to thank the judge for the courtroom. So, the judge was telling me there's some spot here where you get a little strange noise. Is that right? Where do no? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we talk about jails, it's not, uh, you know, it's one of the necessities of, of government. It's one of the necessities of life. And it's not something that we get excited about spending money on, but it's something that if the criminal justice system is going to work, all parts of the system have to work. And when you have uh, limited capacity in jails uh, in a county, what that simply means is it messes up the normal rhythm of the criminal justice system. Decisions have to be made that would not normally be made but for the fact that you have a jail problem. Uh, so these, these things are very, very important. So uh, to everyone in Gallia County, thank you for your, your leadership uh, and for taking, taking this on uh, and for being willing to, to build to build this new new jail. Again, it's something that's necessary, uh, but not something that we all we get really excited uh, about, but something that we have to do. Um, let me talk for a moment about how uh, this, this came about. And I first wanna thank the state legislature uh, for their, their help um, in money in the capital bill, uh, Representative Stevens, 
uh, Senator Peterson, uh, both of are strong, strong advocates for, for Gallia County and for the rest of their district, and they frankly both do a, a phenomenal job representing you uh, in, in Columbus. Uh, one of the things that the uh, Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections uh, does is inspect county jails. Uh, it's part of what the law says. And by doing that, they get an insight into what's going on in the, in the county jails. And really, this money initially started, uh, the idea for this money started uh, when the director and I were talking about our jails and talking about some of the counties that, frankly, were small counties, uh, really didn't have the resources to build a new jail or to rehab the jail that they had, um, and, but really had the very significant need. And so we went to the legislature with, with the idea of, in the capital bill, let's set aside $50 million. And let's use that for the most needy counties in the sense of ability to deal with the problem, but also the severity, severity of the problem. Um, and so we set with the legislature, passed it, uh, set aside the $50 million. And then it went, goes back then to the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections under, under the provisions of that law uh, to determine where that money, where that money was going to be spent. Um, so let me just give you a little idea uh, to put this in perspective. $50 million was available. 51 counties applied. 51 counties applied. They asked for a total of $368 million. Uh, so obviously there's, there's a very, very significant uh, need. Um, it really was, came down to a handful of counties that we were able to, to fund. Uh, Gallia County, uh, as you know, is getting $5.5 million. Uh, that is out of, I think, Commissioner, the last I knew, your total cost was about, what, 21, something like about that? About 20 million. About 20 million. Yes, so, again, uh, we're here to, to celebrate the 5.5 million that's coming from the state, but I want to pay tribute to the people of the county uh, for basically putting up three fourths of the money. So, so thank you all for, for doing that. Uh, we want to help. Uh, we know that money is fungible and that uh, if we put this money in here, then the county will be able at some point to maybe spend money in other, other places. Uh, other places where people can see the direct impact. Um, and so that's, that's why um, we, are, we are here today to, to celebrate this. To put this maybe in a little further perspective, uh, other jails receiving funding include the county jails in Coshocton County, Harrison County, uh, and Lawrence County. Um, funding will help all three of those counties build uh, brand new facilities. Uh, Scioto County Jail uh, will be able to expand to create a new minimum security jail for women uh, under this money. And the Southeastern Ohio Regional Jail, uh, which is in Nelsonville, uh, which is where we're headed later today, will also receive funding to be able to, to expand. Uh, we hope, I've um, been talking with members of the, of, of the legislature, uh, Representative Stevens has, has a bill in, uh, we hope to be able to continue uh, this program in future capital bills. Not yet determined what amount of money it will be, but as you can see, there's still a lot of need out there. Uh, so we're, we're happy, happy to be where we are today. Uh, I want to ask uh, my wife Fran to come up. Uh, Harold talked about Fran a little bit. Um, but I want to ask Fran to come up because on the way down we were talking about uh, the Imagination Library and uh, how good a job Gallia County has done in getting the, get the Imagination Library out to more and more children. Fran? So when I travel with Mike, see, he has to let me say a word or two, so I'm happy to be here to say a word or two. Um, it really is exciting to be in this county, though, and see the great job you've did, done in signing kids up for the Imagination Library. We are at about 41, 42 percent 
of the eligible kids signed up statewide. But here in Gallia County, um, and you just started in February of 2020, you're at 59 percent. So you're to be congratulated. And I think that's really great. And the Easter Seals is the affiliate here. They've done an incredible job. And Amy DeSantis has just been taking this on as her, her baby, <laughs> and she's done an incredible job. So we want to thank her, too. Um, just, just a couple of things about the Imagination Library. You know, we partner with the Dolly Parton Imagination Library, and these books are come to children from the time they're born until they're five years old. They get a book in the mail every single month addressed to the child. So they're great books, and we think it makes such a difference. One of the statistics that I like to, to tell about, and I think it's appropriate today, is Cincinnati Children's Hospital did a study and uh, they gave the kids the books, they measured them, they gave them the books for three years and then measured them again. And these kids came up 15 points on the kindergarten readiness scale. So they were right even with everybody else. So if, if we can imagine that our kids are starting even, ready for kindergarten, they're not gonna have the failures that they sometimes have. And you know, I think it's gonna make better citizens and, and maybe, maybe we won't need these jails as much if we get everybody ready. So anyway, it's just a way of building up for the kids. And so I just wanna thank you so much for what you're doing here in this county. Um, I know no other county has come up as quickly as you have. And I think there might be a couple that have been established for many, many years that are a little bit over the percent, but you know, you guys have done an incredible job of just coming right up, and I know, you know, if, if you haven't signed kids, if you know of other preschool kids, kids from the time they're born till they're turned five, um, sign them up, ohioimaginationlibrary.org. It's absolutely free to the families, and it's a great, a great program. Thank you. We're happy, uh, we're happy to answer uh, questions from the media. Uh, before we do that, I just want to say <clears throat> that to the sheriff, thank you for doing this. Uh, between the sheriff and the commissioners, is, this is not an easy, easy job, sheriff, to, to uh, put a new jail up. <laughs> and you're not done yet, uh, but we look forward to going out and taking a little tour of the construction, construction site. We saw it coming in and things look like they're rolling. Uh, but uh, to continue to be a sheriff, and uh, still be putting up a new jail, that's not easy. You're doing really two jobs at the same time. So, Sheriff, thanks, congratulations, and uh, we wish you, wish you well. So we're happy to uh, answer any questions from anybody in the media. Anybody, okay. Director, you wanna say anything? Come on, Director, tell them, tell them what we, some of the stuff we did there. Interestingly enough, I come to these things and I don't expect to speak and then all of a sudden, but um, I would like to say that the people here are dedicated and they just don't have a building that's good to work in. You have an excellent staff, you have people that care that are trying to help people change their lives and mend their lives in a space that's not made for it. And not only that, but they're on the road all the time going to other counties, which means you're not as safe as you could be because those people are no longer able to provide safety. They're basically bus drivers. And think about all the trips they're making to other counties. Now those people are gonna be here. Those deputies will provide safety here. So it's not only helping the people that are incarcerated, but it's also making a safer environment for everybody that lives in this area. Um, one of the things I like about this new jail is that it has plenty of treatment space. Um, we know that if we can get people mental health treatment and substance use disorder treatment, then they don't have to come to DRC. And that is, after all, what we want to have happen here. We want to be able to spend more money on education than we do on prisons. And if that's what we want, we have to put investments in the counties where they belong so that people can be diverted that are able to be diverted by treatment. So it's been a great project. Um, of course, I'm not very popular right now. 51 applied, you know, six got money. So um, <laughs> I'm just going to come back to Gallia, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is where I can go out to dinner safely. <laughs> but, but realistically, you know, we, we put a plan together with the Buckeye State Sheriff's Association, Mr. Cornwell, Mr. Lights from the commissioners. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had a process that everyone would think was fair. 
So we scored things like programming space and you know willingness to help other counties. And this is a county that's been getting help and is more than willing to help the counties around them now. So I know some people are like, oh golly, they're building quite a big jail, but they're building it so that they can turn around and give the help that's been given to them. So this is gonna be good for the whole contiguous set of counties here. So very exciting and you know, again, I just like to stress, no matter what the physical plan is like, the people that work in it have done great work with the physical plant they have.